Uh, play of the game from way down. One, two, silence. The Rainer getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Rainer. Lifefinder keeps Maya up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he like, what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death metal into oh, the double my. triple kill. Alrighty, welcome back everybody. So we are gonna start off the night here with a div a game between a few loose screws and wipe them again uh, our teams are already in the draft so we're gonna hop right over there but i do want to show you the map selection here real quick the bands were cursed hollow and infernal shrines and on top of that we have sky temple and towers of doom our selection for this game is going to be Braxis Holdout, and keep in mind that Braxis was slightly adjusted here recently. So let's get into this draft. Take a look at what we've got so far. As we see a few heroes banned out that are uh, somewhat common, the Rexar Ana. However, we also see some heroes that are less common in the Lucio Varian. Um, and uh, the Varian, I'm, it's either a you know comfort pick on the other side, or you know the Zarya, right? I mean, Shattering Throw is a thing. Um, and they're just ripping through this draft. So we got Stukov Diablo, we've got ETC Greymane, so that Zarya Shield enabling the Greymane to uh, go a little bit harder and a little bit safer. And the response ban is Taronda. That's, that's a good ban. Tarana gives the value to that uh, Lunar Flare after the ETC Power Slide. Um, can also help out with the Greymane with uh, her uh, Hunter's Mark. Uh, and then Thrall. So, that, you know, Thrall again, kind of, you know, solid uh, solo laner. Also has the Sundering to cause the uh, ETC Mosh to get interrupted. Um, roots on to Greymane can cause a problem, so... All right, fair enough. So I am interested to see what we get out of the the rest of the the team here for Philus Screws. Um, and we see Ragnar. So again, you know, I mentioned earlier about oh my goodness, guys. <laughs> so they appear to have not gotten the message about the change in the Zerg, or at least uh, maybe they just don't care as the Zerg now not quite as easily punished with a Lava Wave or Planet Cracker. Uh, but the Sylvanas, a good pickup. That's going to allow them to press harder with the Zerg. So, yeah, okay. So, interesting setup here overall. And there we go. Make sure those are all on the right sides. Interesting setup. So we've got a, a pretty moderate front line um, from both sides. I mean, Diablo's a little bit tankier than ETC eventually. Uh, but they do have the shields coming out from Zarya. Uh, just the Stukov on the other side. But they have a lot of damage. I mean, Vala does a lot of damage. Sylvanas does a lot of damage. Ragnaros can do a lot of damage. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, getting ready for game number one between few loose screws and wipe them again. Oh, they did change people on me. Darn it. Make sure that that looks correct. It does. Oh, Disney Studio, so it's Sovereign, and... Yeah, okay, so I think that's correct. Let's go over to this side and make sure. Go. Yeah, okay, all right. Let's go ahead and do a quick introduction of our teams for Wipe Them again. You know what, we're on the other side. Let's go over here. Wipe Them again. We've got Kuroha on Ragnaros. 
uh, own Dizzer on Stukov. Uh, Love Dart is going to be playing the Vala, Hound of Havoc on Diablo, and Sovereign on Sylvanas. That's for Wipe Them Again. For a few loose screws, we've got Lompico on Phoenix. We've got Akash on ETC. Uh, Wipeout is on Anduin. Yep. A Brewer 2 on Zarya and Ragnarok on Greymane. And right away we see Ragnaros in the top lane there. And Phoenix is going to go up to be the solo versus Ragnaros. And Ragnaros takes that... Um, I don't know what the name of the talent, the ability is. Blast Wave. Right, right, right. Blast Wave talent, the E talent, giving him the uh, larger radius and uh, damage. Yeah. Yeah. Got Prog Rock. Bold strategy coming out from Anduin. Um, feasible with, especially with the Zarya uh, shields to support. And, uh... Oh, it's later than I thought. Uh, Spine Launcher from Stukov giving him the ranged attack with the slow. And he's going to get power, or, uh, flipped and tries to power slide out, but just so much damage coming from those towers. Ragnarok in a bit of danger here as Love Dart's chasing him down with that uh, level 1 trait talent, rather, given the uh, extra movement speed at 10 stacks. So, once again, these shrines, or rather these uh, control points now, work just like Dragonshire, or I guess it'd be safe to say, like they did originally. So, if there's a player on them, they're not going to go down like they did for a while there. Sovereign able to make it out. A Brewer turd not quite able to get that grenade to land. Very short range leap of faith. Just trying to make sure that Diablo can't pull a Brewer 2 back. Up in the top lane, Lompico uh, very low against the Ragnaros. But Ragnaros uh, running out of mana here. Does have a couple globes. Brewer 2 gets caught by the Diablo and Hound of Havoc. I don't know if he actually got the stun there, but ultimately it was enough of a pause for Vala to be able to finish off that kill. And we're going to see more progress going over to wipe them again. As the Zerg making its way toward 100%. And Wampiko up in the top here. Trying to come in and stall this, but again, it doesn't just stop just because you tap it. You gotta actually stay on there. And with that, we're gonna see the first Zerg wave of the game. And as you can see, not as much here. They're not they're not coming out with the the massive wave of tiny minions here. Um, there certainly are some, but these guardians and uh, harvesters, I think, is what they're called. Um, now drop pods that every so often that bring new minions to the battle. And as you can see, we just saw the, the small one there up here. So, pretty quick uh, clear. No real damage. I mean, y yeah, you got some damage onto the wall and the towers, but it didn't actually get any um, actual structure damage. But in the bot lane, we do see that they were able to clear up their counter Zerg wave and push into that wall. Brewer 2 having to walk away there as Hound of Havoc trying to walk in, but ETC power sliding in, knocks own Dizzer back, but they don't have the damage to follow up. No root from the Anduin. So everybody walks away from this moment. So just a little bit of a brawl here. Let's take a look at those talents. And welcome, Josh. Power slide in does get the damage there onto Love Dart, but uh, ultimately, still no kills out of this brawl here in uh, the bottom lane. As long as you don't lose. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, the the health of the early objective went down by about half, and then increased the scaling. But uh, Sylvanas getting shredded by the Gray Main. And now they're pretty far in uh, because Vala's not here. And uh, level 7's now available, but Vala not able to actually do this camp by herself, so 
has to call for the assistance of the four members, the, well, the other three members of her team. Also, we see auto attack build out of Vala. Pretty much uh, assuming that Sylvanas and Ragnaros will be able to clear up the waves without any need for like a multi-shot build. And there's the route onto Diablo. But as yet, no follow-up. They're just trying to clear the wave and the bruiser camp coming in here. Diablo may be looking at Akash, but uh, the, the knockback preventing that. And once again, charging it onto Ragnarok. But it's going to be ETC going down from all of that damage coming out of the Demon Hunter. And Ragnarok is, uh, yeah, hearthing a little bit of a dangerous spot there. Almost gets taken out for it. And it looks like this is now going to be a free fort for Wipe Them again. Up in the top lane, so Rag did get a little bit of value onto the uh, the wall there, but now trying to get away as the Chastise does land, getting those uh, smashes onto Phoenix, but not able to get away. And in trade, Wipe Them Again comes in and picks up this Siege Camp and uh, is going to start working some damage onto the Keep Wall with the Sylvanas Black Arrows. Should be able to do that pretty easily. But now we're seeing this rotation coming down from Fulu Screws. Looks like everybody's here. Love Dart is in danger with ETC and Greymane coming to town. And that gives them the pause on the Zerg from above and a nice kill just before the level 10's coming up. Still going in on this, although they don't have Phoenix, so this is... Uh, you know, a relatively... Eh. Never mind. I was going to say it's a relatively even fight, but it's still a 4v3. Because Ragnaros is still up in top. And level 10's now coming online. We've got the Lightning Breath, uh, Rain of Vengeance, the Massive Shove, the Lava Wave, and Wailing Arrow. So, wipe them again coming in saying, hey, we got an advantage here, and we want to make use of it. Phoenix v Ragnaros up in the top. Lompico doesn't have a whole lot of health here. Is just barely able to walk away from that Ragnaros. And uh, Hound of Havoc here just diving in. Does not care about tower shots. Does not care about power slides. Is perfectly happy to go in. And Greymane coming in with that Zarya shield. Trying to get the value here as level 10 is available now. For a uh, few loose screws, we do see the um, Planet Cracker, although I'm not sure exactly where it was going. And uh, Raid of Vengeance does manage to lock down the Phoenix for just long enough, and Vala gets the kill on the ETC shortly thereafter. Welcome, Bigsby. It is a late stream night. Covering for Jason, who uh, our headcaster who got sick, uh, but there we go. We see again the Greyman kill from Vala and a massive shove onto a brew or two, and now we see uh, Wipe Them again saying, hey, we might be able to win this game right now. We still have a pretty heavy Zerg wave, and we're killing people. Of course, it's 60%. They're there's, there's spread out enough that a, a mosh pit's not going to happen, and Vala trying to take out the ETC here. Chastise landing on the Diablo, but that is going to be the core in just a little bit over nine minutes on Brax's holdout. Wipe them again, coming in with a very strong statement. All right, so two kills to six. Not a lot of kills in that game, but ultimately... You know, you don't have to kill people if you've got the Zerg Wave to allow you to get all of that extra siege damage. Overall, relatively low scores here. Just because of the fact that it was a nine minute game. And actually, you know, I want to point out 48k out of Sylvanas is a lot of damage. She did a lot of work in that short period of time. 
um, Ondas are getting nearly as much in the healing. Uh, and look at that too. Like the difference between the healing and the, the damage, the top healing, top damage on both sides is almost identical. A little bit more, uh, a little bit closer on the tanking there. So, and of course Ragnaros getting all the Ragnaros value talents here not a whole lot to look at we only got to level 10 talents so nothing uh too crazy there but that's all right so game number one braxis holdout going over to wipe them again and let's find out uh where we're going next let's see what we're gonna get for game number two so let's take a look at the bands, map bands and all that good stuff. So once again, we had uh, the bands on Infernal Shrines, Cursed Hollow, Sky Temple, and Towers of Doom. So if uh, if we stick to standard NGS, we'll probably see like Volsky Foundry or Tomb of the Spider Queen is kind of what I'm expecting to see. So looks like they want map pick, I'm sorry, uh, first pick. So it, Uh, so anyways, um, Fuel of Screws is going for first pick, so that will give Wipe Them again the map pick for the second time. And it is in fact going to be Volsky Foundry. So Volsky Foundry, um, little bit less likely to snowball out of control that quickly I don't know that I've seen I don't know that I've seen any games on Volskaya um, that ended really before the second control point what do you guys think has anybody seen a, a Volskaya game that go that that quickly like definitely I've definitely seen it second control point take the top keep you know, get some kills, win the game. I've definitely seen that, but I don't think I've ever seen it before that point. I just don't think the, the protector objective is strong enough on the first one to get there. And it's it takes too long. You know, that was the second Zerg wave, but that was nine minutes in. Second Immortal on BOE, again, typically around that roughly level 10 mark, sometimes a little bit before, sometimes a little bit after. So, you know, those things are, are definitely possible to have in that short period of time. I don't think the protector on, on uh, Little Sky Found can do it. Looks like we've got the teams hopping in here. Let's take a quick peek at our uh, NGS Patreon commercial because uh, I'm going to grab a drink. Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Apparently, I wasn't the only one getting a drink. Faster, ready here. <clears throat> All right, so a few loose screws, wipe them again. Take a look at those standings again here. So, uh, wipe them again is slightly ahead of a uh, few loose screws. Um, I believe I actually cast their first game of the season, and I believe they won that game. Um, although I don't recall who they were playing against. Um, so seven to four, that point now puts them up to eight points and we'll tie them with in too deep. We do have one team all set and ready to go. Let's take a look here. The good news is that everybody's still on the right accounts. And hopefully we'll get uh, the second team ready to go so that we can get some more hots in. Hopefully. Soon. Right? That's what we're going for. So what are you guys doing tonight? What else is going on? <laughs> 
So, so J Silv, do you prefer J Silv or Josh or Josh Sill? What what do you what do you go for there? What what do you like? What do you prefer people to call you? Cuz I see that your Discord is J Silv. I'm going to sit here for 30 seconds until you hear that and then you can tell me. Okay. Trying to climb and storm day. Well, you know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. That was, uh, did a little bit. Just played a few games today. Uh, played a few games the other day. Has not gone so well just, just as yet. Started last season with something like a 60, 70. I think at one point at the, at the early stages, I was at a 70% win rate and uh, I'm sitting at a big fat 20% right now. Well, I've only played five games, so that's okay. And we are waiting to hear, there we go. Now we got the readies. Probably write down, I didn't even write down the bands. They were so fast. Ooh, I, you know what? Uh, yes, I bet that, that he does have opinions and he'd probably appreciate a murky. Murky would be uh, the kind of thing that I bet uh, Tiny would appreciate. Here we go, Volsky Industries, let's hop on over to the draft. So we saw, I, I do recall, so we had the Varian Lucio bands. Looks like we're sticking with at least the Lucio. Uh, on the other side, we had a couple more standard bands. We had the Ana and... Who was the, well, you know what? They're probably gonna show me who the other band was, but uh, I remember we had the Toronto band first. Sylvanas, uh, okay, sure. You know, Sylvanas gets a lot of value on this map with the Protector, so I'm okay with that one. She also helped to enable that Zerg wave quite well on uh, game number one, so... Oh, was that with her? Was it Ana with her? Seems like it might have been. So let's see, what are we gonna see out of Div A tonight? Once again, the ETC, so uh, that's fine. On this, on this map, you get the opportunity to get a good mosh or even a stage dive here. Uh, <laughs> Zarya switching sides. You know, you don't see a lot of Zarya to begin with, but already in Game one and two in this Division A game. Let's see if I can find the uh, bands from last round. There we go. Ah, it was Rexar was the other one. That's who it was. And then Thrall. So Taronda did make it through the bands here for Lompico to pick up. I have a feeling these guys are not actually going to be playing these heroes. They're going to switch them around. So I'm going to wait to put my details in. But uh, ETC and Imperius is uh, pretty good. They can work together with their stuns. So ETC can power slide and then uh, allow Imperius to get his Celestial Charge. Li Ming, uh, gonna be the ban for Wipe Them Again, followed up by Vala. And, you know, that's fair. I mean, they, they got murdered between Vala and Li Ming last game. They, they, I'm sorry, not Li Ming. Vala and Sylvanas. So, I don't, I don't mind seeing them get rid of those heroes. They got really punished. Anduin also switching sides here. So, interesting. I wonder, I wonder what the idea was with the Anduin. I guess they're going Light Bomb. Is that the plan? Light Bomb onto Garrosh, maybe? Uh, Kael'thas gives him that zone damage. 
with his living bombs. Also an additional stun, so four stuns plus a root. On the other side, we've got the Garrosh throw. Uh, ultimately, whatever Zarya does for her ultimate has, you know, repositioning either into or out of a zone. Did I list oh, Sylvanas Twice? Oh, darn it. Stukov and Rag is who they had. I think I did. Those player pop-ups are great when you get them right. The last pick's going to be Mephisto. So, interesting overall setup. Mephisto's been kind of coming into more games. I don't even know that I want to go so far as to say he's been coming into the meta. But he's definitely been... Um, he's definitely become a thing. And... Some teams have really made great use of him. So we'll see if uh, if this can be a quick 2-0 for wipe them again. Or if we get a game three as few loose screws come into the table here. Who am I missing? I forgot Phoenix. Man, they are just switching people all over the place here. Sorry, love Dyer, Head of Havoc, Song Zarya. And Ragnaros. All right, well, let's go ahead and introduce our teams here. With the right displays there. On the right side, we have wiped them again. After game number one, they are up one point. We have Own Desert on Anduin Sovereign on Mephisto, Hound of Havoc on Zarya, Love Dart on Garrosh, and Kuroha on Ragnaros. And for a few loose screws looking to take this to game number three, we've got a Brewer 2 on ETC, Ragnarok on Junkrat Lompico on Taranda, Akash on Kale Foss, and Wipeout on Imperius. And ETC diving in after the uh, Ragnaros, trying to get that power slide on the rotation, but uh, both Ragnaros and Imperius coming down into the bot lane. And what is this noise? Convection Kael'thas. Oh no. What division is this? I mean, we brought this up in Div D the other day, and it got a lot of flack in Div D, I can only imagine. I almost want to go into the Div A chat and, and just uh, let everybody know that we've got a Convection Kale Voss in Div A and see how many people show up then. But we'll see uh, what they get out of this. So we do have Mephisto going into this Skull Missile build. Uh, Groundbreaker for Garrosh. Again, the E, the Blast Wave for Ragnaros. Renewed talent for Anduin. So not going into that bold strategy like we saw from the other side. And uh, Love Dart getting a nice big three-person stun there. And so far, three, four globes now for ETC on the Prog Rock. So, gonna have some uh, sustained healing coming out from ETC. A little bit from uh, Imperius for his own stuff. Very aggressive ETC positioning here. Uh, knocking the four-man back away from the Junkrat as Akash and Lamp Lampico coming down to get onto this turret camp. Maybe even a little bit late, but not nearly so late as uh, wipe them again. Bot lane Kuroha not uh, doing so great against the Imperius, having to tap already, um, but is a little bit does have the lane pushed up a little bit farther forward so we'll see how things go as these talents come online for Ragnaros if uh, if he's able to keep up with the Imperius and here we go first protector on the countdown here and it looks like a bit of an invade is ETC coming in here being very aggressive they are going to secure the camp. They do pick up the turret. 
and they drop both of them so used two turrets there to just get the XP basically and overall some pretty significant damage but Akash gonna go down and resetting those convection stacks and there goes the Junkrat as well so a two for nothing trade out from uh, Filus screws as they get the invade they get the XP but then they lose the fight so unfortunate pairing for them Checking in, we do see here for Junkrat, the taste for explosions getting the stacking damage for his uh, grenades that he throws out there. Cannonballs, whatever they're called. We also see the, is this Fell Infusion? Mana Tap? No, Fell Infusion is the other one. So, interesting, uh, interesting build. Oh, the Kael'thas. Not one you see too often. 75% done for the red team. Wipe them again getting significant time on this uh, control point and looking like they may be able to get it the rest of the way. Kael'thas is coming up now though so it will be a full 5 on 5 here if they choose to take it and we're seeing the living bomb out onto the garage but the life, uh, the uh, leap of faith pulling him back just a little bit before the living bomb explodes and Levdark able to use that bloodthirst to keep himself alive and Imperius is going to be the actual death here. <laughs> and the concussion mine throwing Hound of Havoc, Havoc closer to the towers, but it's Zarya. Just throws up a shield and says, yeah, thanks for the energy. So we've, interestingly enough, so we've got Ragnaros and Zarya in the Punisher. They're going to go ahead and get damage onto this wall, but as you can see, like, Mephisto can't do much here, Anduin can't do much, Garrosh can't do a damn thing. Really, the people who could probably do damage to this wall are actually in the Protector. So they send Garrosh down to the bot lane, get that soak, um, and Mephisto now in uh, in danger gets knocked back from the Concussion Mine, and if that Celestial Charge from Wipeout would have hit, that would have been a dead uh, Lord of Hatred, I believe is what he is. And so, ultimately... They got a little bit of damage top, but most of the damage is mid, and Zarya gets the stun from ETC. Knocked back and taken out, so that's going to be the first kill for a few loose screws in this game. And a much needed kill for them to get that XP, try to stay in line with wipe them again. They're pretty much even here, and that's going to give them the opportunity now to get onto the support camp. There we go. Right now, it, it definitely feels like a uh, few loose screws is a little bit discombobulated. And um, I don't know if that's because, you know, they've got some subs on their team for tonight or what have you. But uh, they're, they're not quite in sync, it feels like. So hopefully they're able to, you know, clean that up, bring that together so that they can get these... Uh, get these kills get these objectives and you know make this a strong game they do have the potential to pair a lot of things that if they call their timing on these stuns i mean again i mentioned it earlier etc power slides you've got the uh imperious celestial charge you've got the Toronto stun you've got a gravity lapse i mean there's so many different ways for them to just lock people down and with level 10s they're coming in aggressive it's gonna be throw onto junkrat though he's very low already uh, Shadowstock coming out, the Leap of Faith onto Love Dart again, but right into the mosh pit. Here comes the Graviton Surge, but Garrosh and Anduin getting rip tired right off the map. Lumpigo drops the uh, Biotic Emitter, but Kael'thas gets taken out, just not quite close enough to get into that. So, so far, two for two. Lumpigo trying to finish off Sovereign there, but it's going to be uh, Kuroha chasing down Taronda and taking her out. So ultimately a three for two, maybe a three for three. Zarya shield saves the day with 37 hit points. And now ETC going to have to get away from that uh, Mephisto there. So very aggressive play there. Uh, 
presumably they felt they could do that because they had the um, biotic emitter, but unfortunately it really only hit two people and the people that it didn't hit just died. So, and good on Garrosh, good on Love Dark to kind of be mindful of that, anchoring that bush to make sure that anybody coming in was gonna be isolated from their team. And in this case, it was Junkrat, a low health hero who once stunned took half of his health or yeah, half of his health and damage pretty quickly. So checking in these talents here, we do have the Durance of Hate coming out from Mephisto, Warlord's Challenge for Garrosh, uh, Lava Wave for Ragnaros, Graviton Surge for Zarya, and Light Bomb for Anduin. On the other side, though, we've got Angelic Armaments from Wipeout on Imperius there. And look at this Power Slide in onto the Zarya. So one for one trade is uh, Junkrat also getting caught. And that's... That's a pretty decent value for both teams. I mean, you eliminate the additional support that Zarya brings. You don't. You also don't have to worry about the Graviton Surge. You're already on the point. Um, whereas the other side doesn't have as much poke damage since Junkrat's not here. So the rest of those uh, ultimates, the Phoenix for Kael'thas, Shadowstock we did see for Tyrande, Rip Tire for Junkrat, and Mosh Pit for ETC. But with Wipe Them again coming in, getting this Biotic Emitter now, they can start moving on to this point. They're level 13. They have the advantage. They just have to actually throw Imperius off of the point. And ultimately, they will get that timer to stall out in the neutral. ETC does get hit by the Durance, but that spreads over to both Tyrande and uh, Imperius there. And the Mosh... Yeah, okay, never mind. Riptide coming in, looking for Sovereign, does miss as the Into the Fray throws Sovereign to safety there. And it's going to be Zarya again, but Garrosh does finish the job on Tyrande, so one for one once again here on these teams. And Ragnarok in the back there on Junkrat, trying to get away. Imperious Celestial Charge onto Sovereign. Sovereign's making it out, though, and here comes the Molten Core. And Wipeout doesn't have a lot of health. If he's not careful, that could be uh, a quick death from the Lord of Fire there. And Brutu is going to just get slowed and obliterated. And so now this objective going to start channeling for Wipe to begin. Whew. It is late. So 67% Kael'thas coming back. Let's check in on Kael'thas. How's he doing? Seven stacks. So not impossible, but uh, not the value you'd like to see. You'd like to see that done as quickly as you can in this game. Bada Committer going out, keeping everybody topped up. This is just about to go into overtime. And uh, the throw keeping him out, along with the Graviton Surge, the Durance of Hate Light Bomb combination obliterates Taronda. Love Dart taking some damage, but ultimately able to make it out just fine. Once again, we see the Zarya uh, in the machine in the mech, but now it's uh, Mephisto. And uh, here's the Garrosh hopping in. Needs a, needs a passenger, so they go with Zarya. And they're going to go ahead and split up. Ragnaros is going to head to the mid lane. As he's going to get value in the bot lane from that lava wave. And that's gonna give him a lot of value. That's gonna push those lanes up to the point, up to the wall and uh, tower, setting up for the third objective for sure. Uh, and Ragnaros getting that XP in lane two as well, the mid lane. And now that the wall is down, oh, good concussion mine. If they can get a kill out of it, but it looks like the throw, the Durance again with the Graviton Surge and Junkrat just goes down from all of the damage coming in. Sovereign taking some damage from the fort, but ultimately does manage to get away. And thanks to that healing from Ando, and pops back in and says, hey, surprise, uh, the rest of the things that Samuel L. Jackson says. It could be Lompico in danger. Garrosh trying to catch up, but does get stalled out with those stuns. So a second fort. 
pretty solid value out of all of that. Wipeout getting caught by the Garrosh, thrown into the team. Celestial Charge but gets rooted as well. Double Taunt coming out from Garrosh, and there's a Light Bomb. Gonna take out both Imperius and ETC. And I think that goes along very much with what I said earlier about the kind of disjointed aspect of, of how they're playing right now is, is that, um, you know, the communication is just not seemingly there. Um, you know, the level 16s were available and, uh, you know, your, your individual players kind of go in to check things out. And that's not going to work with a, a Garrosh, especially. And we see it kind of once again here, Ragnarok having to use that concussion mine to get away um i don't know that they can catch him because they don't really have anything to lock him down other than a chastise so he does get away but that's gonna likely give them the support camp yep but they do see that garrosh is down here by himself so this could be a kill that they need to get things going back in their direction with level 16s now, we do see the red team coming down, rotating down. They're a little bit late to save their Garrosh. And that's going to be... Yeah, okay. It's going to be a turret. If they were a little bit faster there and they had Ragnaros, then I think that could have been a very big problem for few loose screws. I think that could have turned into a another Graviton Surge, Durance of Hate, like Light Bomb, Clown Fiesta. It didn't. And so now we have control point C coming online. And Brewer 2, remembering what happened the last time they were in this general vicinity and the Garrosh was here. I guess it wasn't the last time they were just here, but the one before that one, two times ago, holding that baseline. And so now this, uh, this camp cap does favor slightly uh, wipe them again because it, it allows them to push out the top lane while this control point is going and uh Fulu screws is gonna have to respond to that at some point so we do see kale thos sitting at 18 on his convection getting close to that level 20 bonus there and ultimately now uh yeah okay the 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 concept of garage running at you with a chair ready to throw you oh and look at this the pull onto hound of havoc as well as the garage using the indomitable to make sure that that etc mosh pit got absolutely no value durance going out hits the etc imperious walks right into it graviton search coming out hits two including taronda who is able to just barely walk away. And now level 20 is online for wipe them again. And Imperius just says, I don't care. I'm going back in. And I think this is super questionable. I think this is the uh, the wrong call if you're uh, a few loose screws. But they don't have Ragnaros, so they're pushing that top lane. Love Dart does go down on the Garrosh there. Sovereign could also go down and now they're making this play work. Hound of Havoc just able to get away, but they do lose that top keep. And there are there's a camp and a catapult. So, you know, ultimately that was uh that was a pretty decent play for uh wipe them again. I mean, yeah, they lost two, but they were able to secure that keep, and that's gonna be constant pressure here. If these two can actually keep this going for a little bit, then it's even more value. They managed to get them off of the control point long enough that now Blue doesn't own it anymore. Ragnarok goes down. The damage coming out from Ragnaros there to, to get that kill. The Graviton Surge, the Chastise as well. And Ragnaros coming in with that Q damage. Just the smashes going to town. But he is going to ultimately fall along with Zarya to the Kael'thas. So a three for three trade, uh, but I I don't know. This still is not all that much value here for a few loose screws because they still have all of that in the top lane that's coming in. 
I, I mean, they get this fort, but I don't know if that they get much more than that. Yeah, I don't know. I it's hard to say. I mean, taking that bottom fight, um, you know, with the with the Ragnaros el elsewhere, which I, I was not paying attention to, that definitely provided more value to that fight than what I was giving them credit for. So, you know, it probably was, you know, the more appropriate call. I don't think they lose the game though if they lost the Punisher or the Protector there. If they still have five, I mean, they still had both their fort and keep up. So I, I think they could have done it, but, you know, they essentially traded the fort for the keep. Maybe they lose the keep either way, so... Either way, they're in the game. It's still level 20 to 20 now, and everybody's back on the table. And this is where the convection build for Kael'thas is really going to start gaining value, because he's going to be able to throw out those flame strikes constantly onto the enemy team at very far range. And when he hits, he's going to get the reduced cooldown. So it's going to be just a near constant thing. We also have the death metal from ETC. The second uh, count, I guess, of uh, Leap of Faith. The additional cooldown for Leap of Faith for uh, Anduin. Uh, the resets on the grenades there for Zarya as well. A second lava wave and the double throw. And Junkrat able to get out thanks to that Ripper air. ETC power sliding in onto Lovedart, but Lovedart doesn't want to, doesn't want to, you know, go where you think he wants he, him to go. So just a little bit of, a uh, little bit of back and forth here. But, you know, Fuelus Crew says, we're not done. We, we still want this fight. So they're continuing to push in on this. And Lava Wave pushing out that bottom lane. Again, bringing the minions in to the fort. Going to get some additional damage there. ETC power slides in, gets the knockback. But it's going to be Kael'thas getting caught by Sovereign. Just loads of damage coming out there. Kuroha getting taken down a little bit here as well. Ripper air coming from Ragnarok is going to be able to get him out, but Light Bomb coming out onto ETC stalls him out. The Angelic Armaments hits Hound of Havoc, does a load of damage, and ETC gets that death metal to uh, push the, the pause button on Anduin and Ragnaros. Toronto went down in there somewhere too. And with the top keep down, I don't really... Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know necessarily what Love Dart's doing. I guess they're bringing the wave a little bit closer here. I don't know that they even needed to, though. And so now they're just cleaning up the rest of the team, and they're gonna make their way onto the core, as they do have a couple of catapults here as well to provide for that siege damage. And that's gonna be game number two going over to wipe them again here. A little bit longer of a game this round. Let's take a look at these stats, and while we look at stats, we'll see if we can get Sovereign or somebody from Wipe Them Again to come have a chat with us. Let's see. I'll go over there. All right, so taking a look at the stats, 10 kills, 221. Did get just an absolute crazy amount of damage out of the Mephisto. Nearly 50% more damage than the next closest, which was, uh, of course, the Junkrat. Uh, we've got healing numbers, you know, a little bit of disparity there. Mostly just you know, the amount of uh, the additional levels and healing and all that from what they had there tanking pretty similar and there we go we've got sovereign let's go ahead and unmute myself welcome sovereign the captain of wipe them again hello congratulations on your uh, on your victory oh thank you sir so uh two oh that uh that braxis game was real short i think that was a nine minute game yes yeah it was about nine thirteen, if i remember correctly so 
Very you short. guys, you guys have obviously adapted to the uh, Braxis changes pretty well. How do you feel about that map? Um, honestly, we haven't played on the new Braxis very much, but we did like old Braxis, and it seems like uh, most of the changes have been into the scaling of Braxis, which uh, you know, if you play a very early team fight game, you don't have to worry too much about that. Which uh, works very well in your favor. Um, the 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 fights, you know, there were all of six kills and two kills, so very similar or very low kill count, but ultimately, you know, just allowing you enough pressure to be able to uh, make use of the Sylvanas and, and just run it down. Oh yeah, so. everything kind of went in our favor there. A lot of the kill counts were low, but a lot of the kills uh, onto a few loose screws were, were pretty crucial to getting structures or uh, the objective. For sure. And it did not It did seem like, once you guys owned it, I don't know if the... Uh, Alright, the the echo's killing me. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Let me, let me turn you down. Sorry, thanks. Guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so you guys were able to get onto the control points pretty early on, and then, you know, you can see in the top lane there that Phoenix was really trying to come in and, and uh, push against the Ragnaros to get the point, but it almost seemed like... You know, maybe even that they weren't aware that the change had gone live as far as the, the back and forth control aspect of, of the control points. Because Phoenix would like pop in and that was it, right? And then just walk away. And of course, that right. gets you exactly nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but anyway, so yeah, so a nine minute game. Um, I did notice that they banned the variant. Is that something that is like targeted to you guys? Or was that just because of the fact that they were going for the Zarya? Um, I think it had more to do with their Zarya pick because I can't think of anything that we play uh, exceptionally well that would, uh, you know, benefit from having a Varian. Gotcha. And that's what I figured once I saw their their first pick on the Zarya that that's the direction they were going. Right. So, and then uh, so game number two, they they banned your Sylvanas, they banned your Vala from game number one, which were high impact heroes um, going into that. And you guys had a, a little bit of a draft kind of stealing away some of the heroes that they had in game one, right? You had the Zarya, you had the uh, Anduin, and, and flipping back into the Ragnaros, and of course, I don't know that you saw it, but there was a lot of chat about Ragnaros today and Lava Wave and everything. Uh, did you see that? I, I don't know if that was in a chat that you had access to. Uh, would that have been maybe in Duve or the Captain's chat? Uh, it could have been in Captain's chat. It, it might have also been in one of the other Divs chats or even general, I don't oh. recall. But there was a lot of chatter about Lava Wave and the value of Lava Wave as opposed to uh, Sophia Smash. And um, so it was interesting to be able to see that coming into, you know, a Div A game and how much value it was able to provide to you guys, especially in Full Sky Foundry with the amount of XP. Is, is that... Is that a hero you guys like to run, and, and what value do you guys get out of Ragnaros aside from the Lava Wave? Because presumably there's some other benefit, right? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, Kroha is just an excellent solo laner on the team, and uh, for Storm League for us, Ragnaros is obviously one of his favorite picks. And uh, I might have seen that that chatter about Ragnaros, but you know when you look at it, both of his ults, it, it's just obvious which one is far more valuable than the other. And I think. Uh, in that Volskaya game, Ragnaros was pretty much responsible for giving us that three-level lead for most of the match. Yeah, I would generally agree, you know, because so much of the match took place away from the the bot lane, obviously until the very end there, um, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, there was plenty of minions to provide XP, and, uh, and, and you guys were getting kills on top of that, right? Uh, yes. Ultimately getting even that top keep because of the that um and i do uh want to point out you know you were playing the mephisto in this in this last game um were you playing vala the first game uh no i was sylvanas the first so, game yeah, I was, that's what i was thinking first and i was like well, maybe it's not um you know the the damage potential that you have coming out of mephisto is just disgusting right i mean you had almost 50 percent more damage than the next highest player uh, on either team so mephisto's wow. not seen very much tell me a little bit about your your i don't want to call it love for mephisto but you know because i don't know how often you play him but if you love mephisto why do you love mephisto if you don't love mephisto why do you like to play him um 
You know, I don't play him as much as I used to, but I feel like he's just so unique amongst the mages, and there's such a uh, a high skill cap for him with, you know, like keeping track of your cooldowns and uh, deciding which targets you want to hit, not just for damage, but to, uh, you know, mitigate as much as your own cooldowns, you know, to continue the fights. Well, and you guys landed a lot of those uh, combos, whether it was the Graviton Surge with the Durance of Hate or the Light Bomb or, you know, what have you, um, really locking down the enemy team. So, you know, it was pretty clear that you guys have uh, either good practice on those combos or good communication to set those up uh, amongst your team. So, you know, well done. Um, and it's been a while since uh, since we've had this. I think I cast you guys in week one, um, and I'm pretty sure that you guys won then, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes. So there you go. Uh, you can thank me later for making sure that you guys get, you know, a big fat 2-0 victory, because obviously it's all me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. So, uh, last question for you: What was your favorite moment of the map of the match tonight? Uh, which map? Volsky or it, just just overall? What was your favorite moment? What did you What did you What moment did you enjoy the most out of these two games that you that you just played? Um, I think it was probably this full sky game on the last objective where uh, Ragnaros was just hard pushing top lane when we were trying to zone them out of the uh, the third objective. We didn't know how that was going to go for us, and we held out much longer than I thought we were going to, and he was able to get that top keep for us, and I thought that was pretty cool. I, I have to say I was pretty amazed by that because you guys, you know, balls deep, right? You had uh, f two right. versus five, I think you had at that point, or two versus four onto that control point holding it for you know an extra 30 seconds 60 seconds something like that some crazy amount of time for two people to mm -hmm. ultimately uh to hold that point for you know until they obviously were able to get it but you know very solid uh decision to do that and and also be successful in it and you got kills out of it too like you you killed the junk rat immediately after um coming in with you know i think you were still down a player at that point so you know yeah, it didn't go too bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, good deal. Hey, listen, uh, that's going to wrap it up for me. The floor is yours for any shout outs. Um, let's see, just want to say, you know, GG's to Few Loose Screws. It was great playing y'all tonight. It was great both games. And, uh, you know, shout out to my team for holding it together for another two games. And uh, thanks for casting. Absolutely, buddy. Good deal. Well, have a good night. Enjoy your victory and uh, a couple of points to send you up in the standings a little bit. And good luck on the rest of your season. All right. Thank you. Cheers. See ya. All right, everybody. That's going to be end of our cast tonight between Few Loose Screws and Wipe Them Again. The 2-0 victory for Wipe Them Again uh, out of Division A. Don't miss the NGS Rewind this weekend on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash Nexus Gaming Series as we'll be going through some of the casts that did not, or some of the matches that did not get cast this week so far. Uh, I do know that some of the other casters are picking up some of those replays as well. Uh, M. Palindrome was picking up some. I think 2D Moss was going to pick up some. So Ziltoid has been talking about doing some. So I'm sure, you know, if your uh, game is out there and hasn't been cast yet, make sure you check out the uh, Cast My Replay section. Look for that little green check. See who uh, has marked that off and uh, reach out to them and find out when that match is going to show up so that you can uh, check it out. But other than that, we're done here. It's been a pleasure. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.